What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Monday, uh, August the 8th. We are uh, starting the video a little bit late in the day. Uh, it's like 12 o'clock um, pretty much because all I've been doing is opening the valley, uh, just spraying soybeans again. So um, anyway, what I got going on today is we're going to, I got one more load to put out on the beans over in the valley and I think I'm pretty much caught up. Next thing is like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump air compressor. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna be finishing up this last load on the beans over there in the valley. Then we're gonna be swapping it up. Then we're gonna be uh, swapping it up. We're gonna actually be spraying some uh, cotton tomorrow. Got some tissue results back, which I'll go over on, go over all that with y'all in here in, uh, at some point in the video. So uh, here's what we got going on with the combines. Uh, we were not ready to go. Um, I completely forgot about a little issue we got with the combine. Um, basically, long story short, uh, we got the uh, brand new combine, the one behind it right over there. We got it last year uh, late. I didn't have it in time to uh, cut corn with it. So what we had is we got this one right here. This is the one I cut corn with. And on my corn head, I've got the uh, head sight or true sight guidance. It's got these two little bitty wands, cat whiskers or whatever. Anyway, they fill the corn rows and that, that's what the whole guidance is set up with those little cat whiskers and all. So basically, what I'm trying to say is we've got to remove all of this wiring harness out off of this one right here and uh, just get it put on the uh, other combine, the brand new one. I kind of thought about attempting to do it, but when I pulled this cover off mm -hmm. right here, which is over here, Look at all these wires. So this is uh, the main brains of it right here, this little box. But you got all these wires that come with it and they run all the way down to the throat. They run all the way back down to the very back of the combine to the uh, steering wheels. And I was just afraid if I took all this off, I would never get it, get it all hooked back up right. Number one on this machine, I was afraid I'd disable this machine and have it down. And then number two, uh, maybe I wouldn't do it, you know, have it all plugged in right on the uh, new machine. And the new machine, maybe uh, wires may be just a little bit different. So anyway, so I've got uh, Ryan coming down here today from H&R. He's their um, precision guy. Anyway, he's coming down to uh, hopefully remove all of basically just remove like i said the wiring harness everything off of this one right here and just move it up move it over to the new one and uh hopefully he won't have to order anything and everything matches up the same uh we're gonna keep our fingers crossed on that one so some of you may say well why why are, why are you swapping why don't you just leave it on this combine if you had it on there last year and it was running because on this combine back here it has got the uh, automated feature where it on the go changes all of your cleaning, everything that has to do with cleaning the grain, it changes your sieves and everything on the go. So I never got to try it in the corn last year and it worked really good in the soybeans, really good in the wheat. So I, I, that's the whole reason I'm trying to swap this out to see how, you know, to use basically use that feature that we paid for um, on this combine right here. That is where we are. Let's get this video started and um, hope y'all enjoy it. All right, if you were wondering what we're putting out, here's what we got. We want the same recipe, basically. Power Max 3, quart to the acre. All right, so we got our fungicide, our mirror stop. This is the fungicide for the soybeans that we're going with, 13.7 ounces to the acre. Unforgiven, pesticide, this is gonna, um, Basically kill the worms and insects out there and give you a little bit of residual, uh, maybe two weeks or so. Uh, four ounces an acre of Unforgiven. Sniper, this bad boy right here kills on contact. So anything that this spray touches 
uh, your worms and insects, it will kill them immediately. Anything that's hiding underneath the leaves and all, this should take care of at some point. Sniper, 6.4 ounces of the acre. Extendamax, gotta put that in there this time. We got some pretty nasty weeds out there. Especially got some morning glories and uh, may have a stray pigweed or two. This is gonna take care of that where the Roundup would not. So Cinemax, 22 ounces to the acre of that bad boy. And then we got our uh, foam buster. Basically I add this in there whenever I have Extendamax and Roundup and get a little foamy on me. That, that doesn't sound right, foamy on me? Anyway, my tank will get foam in it. So I put a little bit of this in there to uh, knock that out of the way. So like I was saying, this is the uh, last fill up. Uh, this will finish up the valley for soybeans over there. Uh, then like I said, we'll be swapping the cotton. Uh, been kind of a weird day uh, all morning. It was overcast uh, pretty much most of the day. The sun just started coming out. Even tried to uh, sprinkle on me just like a little bit here and there. You'd have a couple drops hit your windshield. Just a little stray weird looking cloud. Um, Anyway, and it really wasn't hot at all. I, I mean, it was, I bet it was in the 80s all morning, low 80s. Uh, but now the sun's out, so we gotta watch the radar. Pop-up showers can uh, come at any moment. So uh, we'll be watching that. Let's get this load out and then uh, move on to the next thing. Well, this is the new auger. They're not quite done with it. They got a few parts uh, they got still left to put on, but they have come a long ways. I don't want to bother them during the day because they're out here on this hot concrete. Um, it's, it's been pretty miserable on them. So uh, anyway, I hadn't bothered them. They've already gone back today, but it uh, looks like they're probably going to finish up tomorrow. But here's what they got left to uh, put on. So they got this piece right here. This is the part that spins around. This end goes right here, mounts up right here, and then the other end of this pipe, that's where your 18 wheelers dump in. I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, that piece over there, it's got those little wheels that looks like a little tray bolts on right here on the end. So they had to rent a couple of these uh, forklift things. Uh, it's been a pretty big project. I had no idea it was gonna take this much, but um, they had this one, then they had a man lift. Then they've been using our front end loader tractor. They've been using our Komatsu loader. We got a boom on it. And then I saw them earlier today using their case truck. They got a uh, crane thing on the back of it. I saw them using it earlier. So uh, quite an ordeal getting this baby put together. But this right here is a Westfield. 
MKX 13-94. So it's 94 feet long, 13 inch auger. And I've never had a uh, Westfield. So uh, I'm really excited. This baby right here is called the backbone. This pipe that goes all the way down, that keeps it from uh, flexing too much. So that looks really strong. That's something we don't really have on our other ones. Our other ones are kind of got some cables and stuff, but that looks really strong. We did notice that the augers in here are double thick. So it's some really thick iron. See right here. See right there. Well, that's a nice, that's a nice screwdriver right there. I like that prize bar. Part of the tongue right there has got to go on, drive shaft. And uh, this is the tray or whatever, the part where the 18 wheelers will actually dump in here. And these augers will take it into that pipe over there. But pretty simple design, pretty much like all our other augers, but uh, hopefully it will last uh, a lot longer. That's the main thing. Well, everything escalated pretty quickly around here. I am completely surrounded by rain. Um, so that is definitely the last load of the day. Um, Dad found two more fields. He went scouting around. Uh, he wanted me to hit before we go to Lounsboro. One of them is the uh, Tyler Graveyard. We got a 30 acre field up there. He wanted me to hit. And um, then uh, Montgomery Bottom field right over here. He wanted me to hit that and then we'll be heading to Lounsboro, but we're definitely not going to be spraying those this afternoon. So we will catch those in the morning and uh, then we're all going to convoy to uh, Lounsboro and uh, get that cotton sprayed at Lounsboro. But uh, whew, there's a lot of rain around right now. Selma is basically right over there, Blackwell's Bend and all those fields, pretty much right there. Uh, you got Tyler Graveyard, it's over there. Atogaville is right there and it looks like it's getting a big rain it's been a huge cloud right there all afternoon but anyway it's right over there then we got Lounsboro is back that way um doesn't look like a lot of rain close to us but um there is some big clouds in the background so anyway maybe there's some rain in that too so anyway and that's where they're logging up on the hill right there but we'll definitely uh, take the rain for sure. Uh, we are starting to get a little dry right now. So um, hopefully some of our fields are getting some rain. If not, hopefully uh, some of the other farmers around here are getting a good rain because uh, everybody's needing it right now. But um, that is going to wrap it up for today. So we're going to regroup tomorrow and uh, we'll finish up this video. Welcome back guys. Uh, it is uh, day number two, Tuesday, August the uh, 9th. And uh, first thing on the list today is uh, the 8250, uh, the one Ryan from H&R is working on swapping the true sight guidance. Uh, he stayed late last night and got through with it. Poor guy had a long drive home, like a four hour drive, but he stayed, said everything should be good to go. So uh, dad is itching to get this combine hooked up to the header this morning. We're gonna just run it, just make sure everything looks all right. And then I think he's ready to get this thing down to uh, Gray Rocks. So I think that's what he's doing today. Um, so first thing first, we're gonna uh, get all this hooked up, see if it works. And then, uh, then we're gonna jump on spraying. I've had to do that before. That's the uh, height sensing. This is the actual guidance right here. Good to go. Well, 
y'all just sitting up in the cab i already see something wrong we take these gathering chains off every year we put them in a bucket and we soak them with uh, diesel fuel to keep them from rusting and uh they got this row right this side of the row right but they got this chain completely on backwards see that it's supposed to look like that not that okay i had to go in here and do change a bunch of settings on my header i think i got all that right next step is we'll go ahead and calibrate the header while we're hooked up got it Just want me to pulse header down What it's gonna do is gonna go through a sequence of going down, getting a reading of where it is and how much weight is on the hydraulic cylinders right up under here on the feeder house. Then it'll lift up, go back down. It wants me to lift up, hit the button. It's doing all this automatic. All right. Header calibration is completed, which is awesome. All right, guys, moment of truth. We're going to let the header down. We're going to hit resume one. There she goes. We're going to start rolling. We're going to hit our foot pedal to engage. And she's good. How about that? Whew, hallelujah. All right. All I gotta do is swap these chains around and uh, this baby's ready to go to Grey Rocks. Buddy. Wake up. Wake up, buddy. You ready to get out of there? Y'all gotta quit doing this. We got us a not a very smart one this time. There's two in there the other day. What are you doing? Raccoon is still still in the uh, dumpster. So hopefully maybe this is a little bit wider. Maybe he'll get the picture when we put this in there. You don't see anything wrong right there? That's wrong. Huh? Yes. He told me he thought it. I told, I told him then. He told him that go the other way. He told me that you had him doing it wrong. Oh, Lord. Yeah. He <laughs> had yeah, me do it like that. I just did like what he told me to do it. <laughs> That's why I told you to check it. I know. I know how to go. I know, Mark. Right. You got him confused. <laughs> how do you want them? Directly opposed or? They need to be like, like right there, in the, but they don't ever stay like that. Pull that right, All right. right there. Not the dumb thing. Right now, release, release it. All right. Put your, put your head right there, so the doctor can do it. <laughs> you got 
All right, guys, here we go. For some reason today, I feel like I'm going to make all three. I just got a, got a good feeling it's inside the shop. I don't have that wind that was messing me up every time. So we'll see how it goes. Two out of three, not bad, getting better. All right guys, I got the drone with me today, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this video with some drone footage uh, before we get rained out. Alright guys, that is it for the video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. It's a little bit different. Two days into one video. Um, I've got one announcement. My wife, Kelly, wanted me to let everybody know um, on the t-shirts. We sold out really quick on uh, a lot of the larger sizes, the double X's and three X's. Anyway, we sold out real quick on all that stuff. So she's had an order in. That order has come in, so if you go to the website, anybody looking for those larger sizes, we have them now in a lot of the colors. Um, so anyway, check out the website. I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't want to go there, it's www.triple, <clears throat> if I can talk, www.triplerfarmsal.com. Anyway, go check it out if you were looking for the, some larger sizes. Uh, that's it, guys. We are done. Hope y'all enjoyed it, and uh, we'll catch y'all on the next one.